Welcome to the video YouTube. I hope you're all having a great day. So an exciting one for you today. One year on and my student has generated a hundred thousand pounds through their Amazon FBA business. So we're going to look at a timeline for that member of the Elite Academy and break down each of the stages along the way. So you may be watching this video thinking I want to start Amazon FBA but I just can't put all the pieces together chronologically in order. How do I do it? So this is going to be a real life case study of someone who was able to do this through the pandemic and create a business uh, with Amazon FBA that generates five figures per month. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. We're going to be looking at sales, profit breakdowns. We are going to be delving into all areas of Amazon FBA. So enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Right guys, so we've got an exciting video for you all today. Now, it's 2022, one year on from when my student launched their first product on Amazon. So what I wanted to do was give you a bit of a breakdown of the stages that they went through throughout their journey from the day they reached out to me until today, where they're generating about £11,500 in sales per month through their Amazon FBA store with two products. Now, the vast majority of that is from one product, a little bit is from the second product which launched this year. But I wanna give you a timeline. So I wanna actually, for all of you there that are possibly a little bit confused about how the process all comes together, you've probably been watching a lot of YouTube videos, there's a lot of information from tons of different people, and I hope this will give you a better picture and insight into how things work from start to finish. So we're gonna work off a timeline and I'm gonna jump straight into the video and show you how this works. Now, this is a private label product, so that's what I teach, um, Amazon FBA private label. I've had five years experience selling on Amazon and um, I now help people to build their own Amazon FBA businesses from scratch. And if you've watched a lot of my YouTube videos, you'll have probably seen lots of interviews and student testimonials and we see great results from people who follow the, the training. And here's an, an example of that. So we'll go straight into the timeline. Now, this is just a very quick um, illustration of a timeline that I'm going to be following throughout this presentation and working off of this timeline, I suppose, and breaking it down um, with a little bit more information on each of these points. But here's an overview of it. So we're going to look at when... Um, this student joined the Elite Academy, when they finalized their product selection, what took place between those two stages, which is very important. And you know, how did they finalize their product selection? How did they find their product in the first place? What tools did they use? How long did it take? How many units did they order? All of those things that you'd be thinking you want to know before you start this process, we're going to look at in this video. We're then going to move on to from the point that they chose their product, you know, how did they actually get to the point where they were selling on Amazon? How long did that take? How much did it cost? So we're going to look at that as well. We're then going to move down. I'm going to move my head across the screen here. We're going to have a look at some listing optimization, some of the things that um, are carried out further down the line when you launch. This is actually done before and after you launch. It's an ongoing process, listing optimization. But what does it entail? What you'll need to do when you launch your Amazon FBA product and then where we move on from there to product two. So we're gonna also have a look at the results from this member, profit margins from their sales, have a look at some of the problems they've encountered along the way, which you may encounter as well, and how we overcame those obstacles. So we'll go into slide three. So some of the topics, again, I've mentioned this. So product selection launch, the primary focus within the first two to three months, this is something I'm asked a lot. So, you know, what on earth do you do once you, once you launch? How do you make things successful? What do you need to tend to to ensure you have got a successful product that is that promises longevity and potential for the future, not something that's just quick and um, short-lived? So we're also going to look at breakdown of sales and profit. Now, an interesting email that I, I managed to dig out um, now, Bina messaged me, like a lot of people do, through my inquiries email, which is info at amazonsupremacy.com. So have a look at this email. You can, you can pause the video now if you want to have a read of this. I won't bore you and read through the whole email. But basically, Bina is a full-time nurse working for the NHS. She 
um, wanted to start an Amazon FBA business to free up some time, which is the primary reason a lot of people start Amazon FBA. Ultimately, they want to have more free time. Now that comes through having an extra passive income stream, which means they can possibly reduce the amount of hours they work with their nine to five and have more time to do whatever they want to do, essentially. Um, a lot of people have motivation to start Amazon FBA because they're just super enthusiastic about building a business, starting a brand, and that's an exciting prospect, uh, certainly when you begin this journey and uh, was certainly for me when I started. So this is where it all began on May 19th, 2020. I refer to that timeline again. The first time we ever spoke was May 19, 2020. Now, what you guys will find um, a lot, and you may be doing it now, a lot of procrastination, a lot of sitting around and watching videos, ending up um, going off on your own little path down, down into the middle of nowhere where you end up not starting the process at all, which obviously poses problems because you end up revisiting it six months later, things have changed. So the best time to start is now and taking action um, is one of the key points and key takeaways from this video. But look at that from 19th of May, 2020. So that's when she joined the Elite Academy. So we're looking at these two points here that we referred to in the first illustration. So joined in May, 2020. Now, initially, um, what happens when you join the Elite Academy is you work through the training, which is um, 150 lessons broken into 15 different modules, separated to 15 modules with different topics, obviously throughout the, the training. Now, although the training is extremely informative and detailed, people still want one-to-one -one tailored, um, bespoke support through the mentorship. So the mentorship is used, um, I would say, the most during the product research stage. So after being adjoined, we work together um, to decide on her first product. After three months, uh, it turned out we had an issue with one of our products. So initially we didn't believe it was patented, but it turned out that it was. So um, we always are very thorough with our checks and the second time around, it got caught in the net that there was an issue with it. So three months were wasted initially um, with product research to an extent, not completely wasted because there were other products that were shortlisted that we went back to, but the one she actually um, decided on uh, provisionally turned out to be patented. So three months there and a little bit of a setback, but she found the new product in November, 2020. That was when um, actually the final decision was made to launch the product that she's now selling now. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So six months, three of those months were a bit of a write-off. So from that point there, we um, have been working very closely together to decide on this product, looking at the competition, looking at the um, things that we can improve essentially from the products that are that are now existing on Amazon, that are selling on Amazon at present. How can we improve those products? How can we, um, how can we look put ourselves in the customer's shoes, look at negative reviews, look at the products, buy them, trial them, test them out, and make improvements, differentiate, and bring something new to market because the days of just launching the same old product are over. Now, February 2021 was the launch of her new product. So we can see that that's quite a long uh, amount of time. So May 2020 to February 21, um, that fell over Christmas, and also again with the um, the issues at the beginning with the first product being patented, it did delay things. People ask me how long does it take to launch a product on Amazon. It's sort of like asking how long is a piece of string. Um, it will vary from person to person. It depends how quick you work. As you notice from the the introduction, Bina works full time as a, an NHS nurse, and you can imagine at this time of year when COVID was hitting, this was literally putting things together in a spare time with a few hours here and there. Ideally, we'd like to see a product launched within sort of two or three months if possible, if someone's really working um, extremely hard on it. So that's a timeline there for when we finalize product selection. So we can see here, April 2021 launch, month one, month two. So if we have a look, we have got a message from Bina on Instagram on the 28th of April. So hi Dale, I sold four yesterday and two so far today. I'm so excited. So it is exciting when you launch. When you launch, you know, you start to get sales. You think, you know, as if someone's actually buying my product. It doesn't seem real until it actually starts to begin, and you see sales that are accumulating in your dashboard and on your app. But 
uh, it starts to get quite exciting at that point. So the first 30 days, this section here, guys, she hadn't actually officially launched. She got some reviews in this in this part. Launch was around here, and you can see the trend there, the upward trend from the point that she launched. We can see here, almost on day 10, we're looking at £550 in revenue a day, and reviews were very, very low at that point, uh, you know, which is a reflection of how good the product was, that it was selling in such high volume so early on. Um, now, the price point for this product was around £58, £55, so higher ticket priced item. And we can see here at the end of month two, we're looking at about £7,500 in revenue in sales. Now, profit margins are about 35%. To 37% from what she has told me through her breakdown and what we um, worked out initially, although it's slightly different from what we worked out initially, um, but it's close. And uh, looking at these sales here, you can um, you can work out that that would be around. Let's have a look. Do some quick maths here. About 2,700 pounds roughly in, in profit. Now, m a lot of that profit during launch is reinvested back into advertising. Now, a lot of people will tell you this. So one thing I wanted to speak about here was how PPC is used when you launch and how it can affect your profit margin. So although Bina had a healthy profit margin, the first few months you'll typically spend um, a percentage of your PPC and reinvest it into your advertising to promote your product and your organic ranking. Now, at the beginning when you launch, PPC is the hardest to run um, efficiently and effectively because your reviews are lower and you are um, not visible in the search results and your conversions are going to be lower ultimately when you first launch to what they would you'd aim for them to be six months to 12 months down the line. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of measuring their success over the first few months purely based on how much profit they make. Now, one thing that you've got to bear in mind is this business model and what you should be aiming for is longevity with the business. And what you um, is important to understand is that as long as you're seeing positive growth and tracking your organic movement up to page one and you're seeing movement, um, positive movement, progressive movement up to page one. If you're spending money on PPC, that's okay, that's good, that's part of the process, whether it's eating into your profits or not. Although profits are obviously a um, important factor, the first few months, don't measure your success purely on profits. That will come, measure your success with a balance of profit, but also um, how much success you're seeing with your organic ranking, because ultimately that's the balance you want. A year down the line, you want to be spending less on PPC and more, a higher majority of your sales coming through your organic positioning rather than sponsored. Um, and obviously your ACoS and things will go down as your listing matures. So that's what we're looking at here for a bit of a timeline. Now, if we have a look here, these are the two tools she use, uses uh, and used to select her first product. Now, I'm not gonna go and do a, a tutorial on these two because we've got tons of videos on my YouTube channel looking at how they work. But essentially, guys, these two tools are used for product research. So they give you a breakdown of the um, the product, the brand, the revenue, the BSR, the fees that you would incur if you sold that product, the revenue, the, um, the history of sales over a period of time. We can see that with the sales graph. This is x-ray, this is more of a manual approach. And then we've also got black box, which, um, sorry, that's wrong. That should say black box, we'll change that. I was gonna do a, um, a tutorial on magnet, but change the black box right at the end. So we can see here using black box, We've set some parameters here for monthly revenue, price, revenue count, and that has now come back with some results. So this is a, a faster way to do product research, but it has some um, some drawbacks in the sense that if people use the same parameters, they tend to see the same products. But if you guys want to check out some of those videos, just literally type it into YouTube with my name and you can watch that. Now, throughout the the you know the first month, two, three months, it's not all a walk in the park. Right, things can go wrong. And here were two issues, uh, obstacles that were encountered along the way. So firstly, the error 5665. So we refer to this often as the, the, the brand name error. So Amazon um, 
when you first try to list your product and put your brand name in, you'll have error 5665, which basically says to you, you can't list this product using this brand name unless you uh, are able to provide some, usually they ask for images with um, that show your brand name affixed to the product, you holding them in your hand, the products in your hand with your brand name, so they can be certain that you um, are actually the brand owner. Even if you're not trademarked, they will still ask for um, for those images. Quite an easy one to get past. It's not a problem to get past, but this was something that initially set her back. It took a few days to get past this, this error. And again, you, um, you'll need to provide photos with your brand name affixed to the product. In an ideal world, you'll have a product at home with you. I would suggest that um, because they don't tend to accept images that are just white back that potentially are Photoshopped. We can see here they want pictures, real life pictures of you holding the product in your hand. Now, the reason they do this is that it prevents hijackers. So you can't have people coming on and just launching a product, creating a listing with your brand name and selling it um, when they don't actually have the product. Whereas you have got the product and they want to see that with proof of you actually showing images holding it. Now, also, there were issues with a third-party inspection. For some reason, the supplier didn't want to allow an inspection. The re reason we use inspections is to check the quality quality check of the of the product before they're shipped. Um, we ended up getting past this. One of the things that you can do that works very well is use Ali Inspection Services. No supplier should really refuse an inspection. It alarm bells should start ringing if they do because. Ultimately, what they're saying is they don't want you to look at the quality of the product before they ship them. Now, who says that if they haven't got a reason, something sinister behind it, if the products, for example, aren't up to scratch, the standard, the quality is not as good as it should be. So we do want to encourage members to use an inspection. We did get past this by uh, by doing that. Now, this was in June. So remember, launched in May or April, sorry. So in June, being a Reach the 10K Club, and we've got a photo here with her award. Um, this went out to her in July. She got Amazon's Choice Badge, which means she was the um, she was the favoured product for a certain search term out of all of the listings within her category, which is quite an achievement. Um, so well done uh, for that. I've had to block out obviously the product that that she's selling there. So you know this again. Think about this, guys, right? From launching in April to being in the 10K club, almost at 10K a month. I think she was at 10K a month in sales here. And Amazon's choice for her product. To think she's got that far from April to June is, you know, it's it's quite an achievement. So if we go down here, now you guys will be thinking, well, what happened in between here? How did she get from, you know, April to July, you know, so many people messaging me saying, Dale, the goal is to get into the 10K club, show there's demand for the product, show that I'm, I'm generating sales and um, show that my product is wanted and the, the business is moving forward in the right direction. Now, if we look at Beena as an example, what was carried out during those first few months to make sure that she did get to the um, the 10K Club. And these are things that we'll focus on. And I work with students who literally from the day they launch to try to ensure they do get to that stage. Now, split testing and improving the images is something that I talk about a lot. So split testing essentially is trying out some images, seeing what your, um, how your uh, click-through rate um changes when you use certain images and seeing how your conversion rate changes when you use certain images. So we try out image A as the hero image, the first image that people see. How many people are clicking on the ads, right? Are there lots of people clicking on it? Is it drawing people in, the, the type of image that's being used, or, or isn't it? If people are drawn in, what's the conversion rate like? We can test that by using different images and seeing which works the best. Now, advertising and PPC, I mentioned to you previously, you will spend more on PPC in the first few months. If you're spending quite a lot on PPC and it's eating into your profit margin, that's okay, as long as you're seeing um, improvement with your organic ranking for the keywords that you're tracking, which I mentioned previously, that's very important. If you're just burning money with PPC, not tracking your keywords, then that isn't okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that it's it's good to spend all of your, your profits on PPC, it's not. 
unless you are seeing big gains in those other areas. And again, over time, that will balance out and you'll start to see a, sh see a shift over to um, more organic sales coming in, revenue, and less money being spent on PPC. So we always work together to optimize the listings during the first few months. So constantly looking at refining um, the keywords that you're using based on the, the spend and the performance of your campaigns through the reporting through Amazon, looking at your images, looking at your title, looking at your descriptions, working on reviews massively over that first few months. Now, reviews aren't easy to acquire, lots of different ways to get reviews. Um, the request a review button, typically you can um, you can use Helium 10 for this or Feedback Wiz, integrate it so it automates the review request. But that's one method. We've got product, product inserts that can be um, put inside the packaging to encourage people to leave reviews. Lots of different ways to gain reviews, but there needs to be a heavy emphasis on it. And we've got some very effective techniques within the, um, the Elite Academy that look at that. I mentioned here monitoring organic ranking. Again, how that ties in so closely with um, justifying PPC spend because you can't justify it if you're not, excuse me, you can't justify it if you're not seeing um, any success with your organic ranking. Now, PPC is something that people struggle with in, in all honesty. Um, when I first started selling, it was a bit of a minefield and a lot of trial and error and it was hard to understand it and it took time to refine a process that worked. But at the moment, we we see a lot of success from members who use PPC, low ACoS is, which is one of the metrics to, um, to measure whether your PPC is effective or not, as well as a few other things, your return on ad spend, another one. But these are some of the things that we focused on the first two to three months. And again, guys, I encourage you so much. If you are a member now, we've got over a thousand members, reach out to me. I want to be involved through the mentorship. You don't need to do it on your own. And although a huge majority of people do reach out to me to talk to me for help, um, and we see a direct positive correlation between the people who do reach out and the people who see success. So make sure that you, uh, that you do do that. Now, margins, I mentioned previously, 35 to 37%. On average, about 50% rein reinvested into PPC. Um, that is within the first two or three months. So from that point on, this percentage tends to go down. It varies. Again, it depends how competitive the niche is, what product you launch. There's no exact percentage of what you should spend of your profit initially. It depends how the campaigns are performing and you would evaluate that on a weekly basis throughout your um, first few weeks and months selling and then thereafter as well. Now, Bina launched her second product in January 22, and um, she's had a few months out of stock over this period, and um, that affected her overall sales for the last 12 months. But this um, screenshot here is from June 21. So uh, remember, she launched in April, so we've got the whole of April, the whole of May. Um, so this is 10 months. When we include those other two months, this is 10 plus the two, it was just over a hundred thousand pounds in sales. Now, that's a fantastic achievement, considering we can see here times when she's been out of stock and the fact that she's only just launched here. So had a nearly a thirty thousand pound revenue month in December. So almost ten thousand pounds profit there um, in December. Again, some of which was was um, pumped into PPC and reinvested. I always, again, myself as well. Huge amount of my profits initially were reinvested into the business to grow, um, to add products, to increase revenue and thus profit. I then took a lot of money out and invested it into property. Um, I put it into a pension, put it into investment funds, and that is now growing there. So you've got to do things cleverly. Um, people who see success and get succumb to the temptation of taking that money out and spending it all, you, um, you know, you are going to see the negative effect that's going to have on your business and your growth of your business, essentially. But 100K business, one year on, bit of a timeline and breakdown of how it all worked there, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, could have gone into a, you know, an hour or two video looking at this, but I've tried to keep it short and sweet and informative. If you have got any questions, please comment below. I'll be happy to, to answer them. And uh, there'll be lots more videos to come 
If you've got any suggestions for videos, please feel free to put that in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching, as always. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.